a continuation sa depletion. Now, ano naman yung expiration cost, yung second cost? Expiration cost, yan ay um, before pa magkaroon ng technical feasibility. Ibig sabihin, pwede na talaga mag-start na meron talaga nandoon, nandoon na minerals. Na pag na-extract natin yung minerals na yun, pwede natin maibenta. At may bibiling mga sellers in the future. So, feasible yung business. Yan. And, uh, encourage siya to attempt, in attempt to locate the natural resource that can economically be extracted or exploited. It this includes acquisition of right to explore. Yan. So, normally, mapapansin nyo lahat ng exploration cost is mainly um, it is mainly intangible. Kasi ang magiging tangible lang yan is yung ginamit mo sa process. So, the process, process of exploration, anong ginamit mo dyan, yung pag-study, of course, uh, process yan. Uh, exploration may result either success or failure. Of course, mamaya wala kang namang makita, wala kang nalocate. Kasi, kita mo, ang nakalagay dyan is attempt to locate. Two method of accounting for exploration cost. Kapag successful at saka uh, success, successful effort method, saka full cost method. Kapag successful effort method, um, dapat lahat ng directly related sa discovery is ikakapitalize natin. No? Pero yung mga portion na hindi naman successful, i-expense natin. So, hahatiin natin yung expense natin sa exploration cost. Kung aling portion doon yung naging successful, aling portion doon na naging unsuccessful. Kapag siya ay successful, siya ay capitalized. Kapag unsuccessful yung portion, it will be expense. Kapag full cost method, ibig sabihin, um, lahat ng, uh, ng cost na ginamit sa exploration cost will form part of the asset. Capitalize natin lahat. No? Ang, ano naman ito, ang ratio na ito, rationale, yung, yung, yung reason is, syempre kapag mag a ka, to locate, is parang um, gumagastos ka nung chance to locate. So, yung gastos mo lahat ng chances na yun uh, will form part nung successful locating of natural resource. Kasi, kumbaga, kung hindi ka makapag kung, naka, kung hindi ka makakapag drill ng walang laman, yung unsuccessful hindi ka pupunta sa another location para mag-drill doon. So, another unsuccessful. Ngayon, nag-drill ka sa third location, sa third portion ng lupa. Nag-successful na. So, parang ibig sabihin, kung hindi mo na-incur yung dalawang unsuccessful costs na yon hindi mo maatin yung successful portion noong exploration process. Kaya lahat ng cost ay ikakapitalize. Yan. A wild goose chase. Mm -hmm. uh, is part of drilling dry holes is part of locating productive holes. Yan. Yung ibig sabihin kasi ng drilling dry holes kapag uh, naghahanap tayo ng sa oil. So kapag nag-drill tayo tapos yung butas is tuyo pa din, unsuccessful kasi walang oil. Tapos kung makapagkukay tayo ng productive hole, Ibig sabihin, nakagukay tayo tapos merong oil na lumabas, nag-extract yung oil. Yun, yun yung successful. Both methods are used in practice kasi parehas naman siyang uh, tama yung rason. Most large and successful entities follow successful effort. Um, cost method is popular among small oil entities. Expense outright na kapag hindi successful. Ito naman, successful man or hindi, diretso siya sa cost nung expiration. 
development cost is from the time na mag start mo yung business na feasible na and pwede na sa, sa commercial. Yung cost na i-incur na is development cost. Yan. It may be also tangible or intangible. Intangible. Yan. Of course, yan na yan. And explain lang kung ano yung possible na, ano yung mga tangible like uh, equipment, heavy machinery, tunnels, bunker, mine shaft, intangible development cost, yung mga um, drilling, sinking, mine shaft, kumbaga ito lahat ay process. So, the process of drilling, the process of uh, sinking, and construction of well, yung proseso ng construction of walls, wells, sorry. Yan. Estimated restoration cost. So, ito yung um, parang salvage value or yung cost na ating gagustusin once tapos na yung ating kontrata to mine. Na aayusin natin yung lupa. Magkano yung posible nating magastos? Depletion. Depletion is a systemat is the systematic allocation of depletable amount of a wasting asset over the period the natural resource is ex extracted or produced. Uh, however, depletion is recognized as the cost of material used in production and thus becomes the finished product and extractive entity since the wasting asset is conceived in the total cost of the materials available for production. So, depletion para din siyang depreciation. Ang ano lang dito is natural resources yung pinag-uusapan natin. Ang natural resources is hindi siya nagdi-depreciate. Siya ay nagdi-deplete. Ibig sabihin, umuunti yung amount niya. Excuse me. So, yun. Yung amount dito kasi yung pinag-uusapan. Yung kasi de depreciation is yung value. Value to value in use, parang don carrying amount. Depletion method normally computed using output or production method. Yan, tapos ito ay uh, um, uh, ito ay description ng formula na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. The depletable amount of the wasting asset is divided by the units estimated to be extracted to obtain a depletion rate per unit. Tapos yung, de yung depletion rate per unit, yung parang sabi ko kanina sa previous video, 10,000 over 100,000 is 10%. It is then multiplied by the units extracted during during the year to arrive at the depletion for the period. Ay, depletable amount. Depletable amount, let's say, ang total cost is 10M divided by, sorry, 10M pesos divided by 100,000 units equals 10M. 10M divided by 100,000 equals 100 units, 100 peso per unit. Tapos yung 100 peso per unit, pag multiply mo kung magkano yung na-extract ngayon, let's say 10,000 units, Ang depre depletion amount for this year is 1 million pesos. Illustration. So, dito, diretso na lang tayo sa mga 000 dyan. Ang acquisition cost 3M. Ang exploration cost 2M. Ang development cost 5M. 3 plus 2 plus 5, 10M. Kuha na yan. Ngayon, doon sa exploration cost na yon na ang na-evaluate, ang na-estimate na unit is 1M. So, 10M divided by 1M, ang depletion, depletion rate per unit is 10 pesos. Sabi, um, no first year ang na-extract is 250,000. So, 250,000 times 10 is 2.5M. Ang 2.5M niya na yung depletion Depletion mo for the first year. Tapos, paano mag-account? So, depletion. Kahit wala ng depletion expense. Basta depletion. Tapos, accumulated depletion din. Gumagamit din tayo ng accumulated. Now, kasi, ang pagkakaiba din ng depletion, 
tsaka ng depreciation. Ang depreciation, kapag ang asset mo is part ng operation, pasok siya sa cost of production or cost of sale. Pero yung depreciation mo, isang din depreciation mo, office nyo. So, yung office, yung depreciation ng office is part ng operating ex, ng general and administrative expense. Okay? Pero sa pag-depletion, automatically, lahat yon is pasok sa cost of production or cost. Kasi yung depletion mo is e, ibinabangga mo lang sa asset used in the operation. If the statement financial is prepared, yan, may separate tayo line items. Resource deposit as cost, 10M. Accumulated depreciation, 2.5 ka rin amount. Separate line item. Unlike sa... Ay, parehas din pala. Unlike sa... Ano pala? Unlike sa PPE, yung depreciation, pwede mo i-present yung property and equipment, comma, net. Parang net amount na yung ipapakita mo sa financial position. Pero kapag wasting asset, kailangan ganyan yung presentation sa financial position. Kasi kung titingnan, titingin yung mga government, government authorities, agencies, una nilang titingnan yung resource deposit kung magkano yung uh, yung cost na nandoon sa property na yon Tapos magkano na yung na-extract. Yan. Pwede din naman ang straight line method kasi nakita natin na 10 pesos or parang 10 na 10% per year, lalabas na 10% per year. Pero hindi siya masyadong gagamitin kasi mahirap i-assess yung useful life ng wasting asset in terms of year. Ang reason na alam ko is possible na na sa second year magkaroon ng lindol tapos lahat noong nung mga wasting asset ay nasira tapos yung explore, na explore na value nitong 10M is parang nawala na bigla yung mga oil doon. So yung straight line method kapag sinunod yun, hindi siya applicable sa mga ganong scenario. Lalo kung sa next year ang ma-extract natin is 500,000 pala tapos naka straight line method tayo na 2 na 10%. So parang 10% pa yun. Mm -hmm. 10%, sorry, hindi pala. 250 divided by 10M. Mm -hmm. Basta hindi applicable. Ah, hindi, pwede naman, pero hindi siya, ang arte, hindi siya favorable gamitin. Hindi siya uh, accurate. Ano ba yung term? Yung hindi siya accurate. Revision of depletion rate. Pwede kasing annually, chinecheck kung ilan pa yung natitirang minerals doon. Yung wasting asset, ilan pa yung natitira doon. Kasi every year, pwede mag-iba-iba yung value uh, ng pagkakadiscover kung ilang pang units yung nandun sa land. Kasi nga, kumbaga, uh, minsan nagkakamali din ng basa yung, yung pag-explore sa pag-explore. Mm, kapag ganon, uh, para din siya sa depreciation na change in useful life. Kaya papasok siya under ng change, change in estimate. Illustration, so yung original cost niya, um, yung kanina sa example, ngayon second year na tayo, nagkaroon ng development cost na 3,750,000, tapos recoverable deposit, um, estimated to be 1.1250 units at the beginning of the second year. Balik tayo sa example kanina. Sa example kanina, ang, ang estimated natin na resource deposit is 1M. Diba? Ngayon, 1250 na at the beginning of the second year. What you will do is you will get the original cost muna, yung 10M. Tapos yung nadagdag na cost this year, 3750 okay na tayo dyan. So as of the second year, your total cost is 13.75M. I-deduct mo yung accumulated depreciation mo na 25. 
sa nanggaling yung 2,5 dito. Dito siya nanggaling. Okay? So, diretso tayo. Makukuha mo na yung remaining depletable amount. So, ito pa yung peso sign. Ngayon, ano yung i-divide natin dyan? So, this is cumulative. Ano? Since this is cumulative, ang i-divide mo dyan is magkano na yung estimated units na makukuha mo sa start ng year na ito. So, 1,250. 11,250 divided by 1,250 is equal to 9. So, ngayon, 9 pesos na kada unit. Unlike no first year, 10 pesos per unit. Assuming na at the end of that second year, nakakuha ng 300 units. So, you will multiply the 300 units by 9%. So, yan yung entry to record. Depreciation of mining property. Okay. Um, generally, the depreciation of equipment used in mining operation is based on the useful life of equipment or the useful life of wasting asset, whichever is shorter. So, titignan din natin sa mga illustration na sunod. Kaya, whichever is shorter, assuming na yung useful life ng equipment mo, nung nabili mo, sabi ay, ay kaya, pwede, ka, pwede na hanggang 20 years. Pero yung wasting asset mo, hanggang 5 years lang pala eh, hindi mo naman magagamit yung equipment after 5 years kasi intended for mining lang naman yon So, ang gagamitin mo is 5 years. Yan. Ang equipment normally straight line method siya. But if the useful life of a sting asset is shorter, the output method of depreciation is frequently used. Okay. Kung ang wasting ah, kung ang equipment ay hanggang 3 years lang, let's say third hand na yung nabili, so 3 years lang daw pwede magamit. Pero yung wasting asset natin is 5 years. Ang gagamitin natin ay straight line. Kasi madali na siyang ma-compute kasi sa, na stated sa problem na 3 years. Tapos, kung ang useful life ng asset yung mas mababa, yung sinasabi natin dito, whichever is shorter, pag yun yung mas mababa, ang gagamitin natin is output method. So, yun yung madalas gamitin. Ibe-base yung depreciation ng mining property sa depletable rate ng wasting asset. Yan using straight line method. Kapag movable, can be used for future extractive project. Kaya naman sinasabi dito na whichever is shorter, yung equipment is intended for that specific operation. Pero, kung yung equipment natin is may paggagamitan pa tayo na susunod na project, we will use straight line method using the useful life of the mining equipment. Okay. Illustration, so natural merong 450,000, tapos merong equipment, ang cost ay 9M, ang useful life is assessed to be 10 years. If the estimate, if it is estimated that 30,000 unit will be extracted each year, so 450 divided by 300. 30,000 units, sorry, will get 15 years. So, it is estimated as that the life of the wasting asset is 15 years. Ngayon, ang mas mababa is 10 years versus 15 years. So, again, ang gagamitin natin dyan na, na pag-allocate ng amount ng 9M is straight line method kasi mas mababa yung value ng equipment. So, for this year, meron tayong depreciation noong equipment for mining, which is 900,000. Ah, ngayon, kung 50,000 units yung um, na-estimate, so 450 divided by 50 is 9 years. 
Uh, following the rule, ang mas mababa ngayon ay 9 years, which is the useful life of the wasting asset. So, the, main, the mining asset now will be depreciated based on the depletion rate of the wasting asset. Ayan. Suppose that on the first year, merong 450 units na May 50,000 units na na-extract. So, imumultiply lang natin siya sa 20 pesos. Yan yung 9 million minus 450 units. Okay. So, 1M yung depreciation for the first year. Kung magkaroon naman ng shutdown, yung biglang um, tumigil yung operation, hindi natin magagamit yung output method yung kung ilan yung na-extract, siya yung ating ibabangga sa depletion rate sa um, deplay, depletion rate per unit. Depletion rate per unit kapag may shutdown. Kasi pamigil ang operation, wala kang maku-extract. Ngayon, yung remaining uh, carrying amount as of the day na mag-shutdown ka, i-divide natin sa remaining life ng equipment to arrive at a depreciation in the year of shutdown. Ibabangga natin doon sa life, sa remaining life ng depreciation noong equipment, noong mining equipment. Okay? Kasi parang, eh hindi naman nagkaroon ng production kasi shutdown. Imposible na hindi siya mag hindi bumaba yung value ng wasting asset for that year. Kahit walang um, output, walang extraction na nangyari. So, if magkaroon man ng shutdown ng second year, so ito, di ba, um, nag-assume na nung unang taon may 50,000 na na-extract, tapos nung second year, walang na-extract. Ang cost na equipment is 9M accumulated debt, 1M. So, meron kang carrying amount na 8M at the beginning of the second year. You will divide the 8M on its remaining useful life. Hindi mo siya multiply sa zero kasi walang na-extract. Diba? Yan. 8 million divided by 9 years. So, ito yung iyon depreciation for the second year. Ngayon, kung sa third year nagkaroon na tayo ng operation, naka-extract tayo ng 60,000, babalik tayo sa computation under ng first year, kung paano tayo nag-compute ng first year. Okay, otay, otay. Yung cost, nabili natin siya ng 9M, yung mining equipment. And then, ang accumulated niya is 1.8, yung first year tsaka second year. Whatever the uh, computation is used, i-add mo lang siya kasi yan yung depreciation expense mo ng first year at second year. Now, yung carrying amount mo ng third year, dyan ka na mag -de divide kung ilan pang deposits or minerals yung natitira. So, 7.1 tapos may natitira ka pang 400,000 kasi may na-extract ka ng first year, wala ka namang na-extract ng second year, i-divide mong 7.1 sa 400k. So, depreciation rate per unit mo is 7.78. Nakuha mo na yan. Now, you will get the 6 tight, the 60, yung units na na-extract mo for the third year, which is 60,000. So, 60,000 times 17.78, your depreciation for the third year is 1 million. Trust fund doctrine. Ang trust fund doctrine, ibig sabihin kasi dito, uh, meron tayong pondo na ilalagak na hindi, parang hindi natin siya gagalawin. Ano? Kasi yung, ano, kasi nga yung exploration is whether successful or unsuccessful. What is unsuccessful? Kamusta naman yung mga shareholders na nag-invest doon sa corporation for that mining? So, the corporation can pay dividends to shareholders 
but limited only to the balance of retained earnings under the trust fund doctrine. Uh, the corporation cannot pay dividends if it, it has deficit because this would tantamount to the return of capital to shareholders. Okay. Kung baga, the um, ano ba scenario dito? Yung doctrine na kung ang retained earnings, I hope naalala nyo yun sa corporation doon sa accounting 2, accounting 102 nagde-declare lang ng dividends sa mga shareholders kung may kinita yung company. Kasi kung negative yung retained earnings, lalong magne-negative pa saan kukuha ng fund para sa dividends. And trust fund doctrine is necessary for the protection of the creditors. Kasi ang nangyayari, may mga practices na nagde-declare ng dividends sa mga stockholders, pero yun pala malaki yung utang sa um, sa mga creditor, sa mga nagpa-utang mayroon pang loan si si corporation sa third party so uunahin mo na yung third party as much as possible, kaya may yan, trust fund ngayon connected dito yung wasting asset doctrine a wasting asset corporation or an entity engaged in extraction of natural resource can legally return the capital to shareholders during the lifetime of the corporation. Accordingly, a wasting asset corporation can pay dividend not only to the extent of retained earnings but also to the extent of accumulated depletion. The amount paid in excess of the retained earnings is accounted for as a liquidating dividend or return or capital. Itong wasting asset doctrine, mahaba yung explanation dyan, pero meron naman yung computation. Yan. Yan na yung computation. Ang sabi, um, uh, to the extent of retained earnings, but also to the extent of accumulated depletion. So, mayroon ka ng dalawang importante dyan. Also, ang importante pa dyan, a word na dividend, liquidating dividend. This is the example. Meron tayong wasting asset amounting to 1M magkano yung maximum dividend na pwedeng i-declare Using this ano this this uh, this me this explanation uh, to the extent of retained earnings at saka to the extent of accumulated depletion So ang pwede lang i-distribute as um, dividend is the 100,000 and the 200,000 as long this is unappro this is unappropriated yung UN unappropriated retained earnings. So, 300,000 yung sagot natin as maximum dividend na pwedeng i-declare. Hindi pwedeng i-declare yung buong 1M. If the maximum amount is declared to dividend, uh, yan, yan yung ating um, entry. So, retained earnings tapos yung accumulated depreciation will, name, will be named as capital liquidated. Para siyang nanggaling sa nag-debit ka ng cap ng ng ano andun pa din yung accumulated depreciation pero um, yung capital liquidated na 100,000 yung gagamitin mo account name at account title. Although this dividend is based on the accumulated depletion, itong 100k, the accumulated depletion account is not charged because the same is not a source of dividend unlike retained earnings. So, retained earnings kasi binawasan natin yung 200k. ba Debit, credit yung normal balance niya. Tapos sa uh, capital liquidated, wala tayong inibo sa account title, sa T-account ni, account ni accumulated depletion. The accumulated depletion balance is used only for the purposes of determining uh, kung magkano yung pwedeng ibalik sa shareholder. The capital liquidated account is a deduction from the total shareholder's equity. Same with uh, treasury shares. Treasury shares. Debit balance din yung kanyang normal balance. Pero doon siya nag-reflect sa equity 
account. Philosophy of Wasting Asset Doctrine. Based ito sa uh, paglilimit ng declaration ng dividendo um, na sosobra, iniiwasan na sosobra siya sa retained earnings. No. Kasi nga, ang uh, wasting asset is irreplaceable. Kasi once na dire-diretso na yung susunod ay unsuccessful na pala yung uh, discovery, yung evaluation ng wasting asset, lugi yung company kung mag-declare siya ng dividends more than its retained earnings and accumulated depletion. Okay. Tapos, bakit po kasama ang accumulated depletion? Kung titignan natin kasi dito, ang retained earnings, nakapaloob dyan yung depletion expense. And sa depletion expense, wala naman tayong in-out na pera. Kung maga nag allocate lang tayo ng cost ng wasting asset. So, lumalabas na sa retained earnings, we work back natin yung na-declare na depletion expense. Kaya magiging 300,000. Okay, 300,000. Now, sa entry, imbes na accumulated depreciation, depletion or depletion expense yung ating tanggalin na account, uh, nag, uh, para nag-add back tayo ng account ng capital liquidated. Okay. Yun. Kaya, pasok pa din din mas sa retained earnings. Mm -hmm. Yan. Uh, philosophy. Tapos kasi, kaya din man, kailangan din mag-declare. Um, hindi ganun ka unfair if laging naiipon yung kinita ng company doon sa kinita ng company sa company. Dapat nag, uh, nag uh, pa profit sharing din naman sa mga shareholders, parang sa partnership. So, dapat nag Uh, de-declare din ang dividends, pero may limit. And yung dividends, dapat din, monitor to the sake, para sa sake ng mga creditors, para hindi masyado mag-decrease yung capital ng, ng company. Ngayon, kung merong mga previous years, yan. Um, retained earnings as of this year, accumulated as of this year, tapos capital liquidated ng prior years, kung nagkaroon ng uh, uh, declaration, tapos unrealized depletion in ending inventory. Yun yung maximum dividend. Okay. Uh, parang naulit to. Moreover, unnecessary and true. Ano ulit lang. Tapos sa uh, yan, illustration, nandyan lahat. So, ito, sundin nyo na lang ito. Kopyahin nyo yan. Yan na yung magiging basis nyo to compute the maximum dividend for the complete, kung merong complete information katulad yan. Raku. Kahit tandahan nyo yung raku. Raku. So, dito, Ra is written in 2M, A, 3M. So, um, 2M plus 3M minus Q, capital liquidated, 500K minus 500K. Raku, ending inventory, inventory of resource deposit, 5, 300K. Ibig sabihin nito, ito yung ending. Kasi kita mo, kita nyo dito, ah, uh, a uh, year end na siya. So ito yung unlik an uh, hindi pa siya na realize na ending inventory. So yun lang, yun yung kukuhanin niyo diyan. Tingnan natin. Oh, sorry. Mali pala ako dun sa <laughs> sa holding part. Um depletion rate is based on 50,000 unit extracted at 20 pesos per unit. 5,000 times 20 pesos.
100,000. One hundred thousand. Hindi ko alam bakit. Three hundred ito. So, five pesos times twenty pesos. I mean, five thousand units times twenty pesos is one hundred thousand. Tapos, yung depletion mo, nakapag-extra ka ng fifty thousand. 50 times 20, 1M. Nakapag-extra ka ng 50,000. So, yan ay parang, ano ba yun? Nakapag-extra ka ng 50,000. Yung 50,000. Itong 50,000 is gagamitin mo for the computation of depletion expense. No? Depletion expense or depreciation expense dun sa kanina nating pinag-usapan yung 1, 2, 3 years. Pero yung inventory resource deposit, amounting to, to 300k, pero ang ating sinet na depletion rate per unit is 20,000. So, 500, ang ating ano dyan, 5,000 times 20. Yan. So, 100,000. Okay. 100,000 pa yung hindi natin na-realize. Yan. So, Raku, um, retained earnings, ah, Raku, 3M minus Q, uh, 500 minus 100, 44. Tapos, yan yung entry to record. Yung capital liquidated is the, um, is the net of Aku. Yan. Ah, yun. Yun na ang tapos ng ating depletion.